Good day, everybody. Welcome to Dr. Tom's Tip on Tuesday's Case of the Week. Today, we're going to be sharing something really cool. We've been asked how or is it possible to use Isolite with guided implant surgeries? Well, check it out. Dr. Hirsch is going to show us how today. Good morning, sir. How the heck are you? Hey, good morning. How are you doing today, Rolando? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tom's Tips on Tuesday at 10. We got a really good one for you today. And now I'm sounding just like Steve Harvey on Family Feud. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so we got a, we got a good one for you today. Um, today we're gonna talk about utilizing a isolite in doing implants and doing it when we are doing guided surgery. So I'm going to talk about that for you today and I'm gonna tell you all the, the ins and the outs and how easy it is. And one of the nicest things about doing implants and guided surgery and utilizing the isolite. It just takes all the guesswork out of it and it takes all the stress out of it. I mean, literally you go in there and in, in 10 minutes, you're done. I mean, it's just that easy and it's that fast and there's just no muss and there's just no fuss. So, so bring what's, up the, the, what's the case? What's the case today, sir? And, and who? Oh, what? thank you very much. Okay, so today this is a case I actually did a couple of years ago. Um, it is guided surgery, tooth number three. I had, he'd fractured tooth number three, failed root canal, fractured it. I don't have the preliminary x-ray. I don't have a follow-up x-ray to show you, but I'll, I'll put that on for next week. Anyway, he took this, he took the, I took number three out. I grafted the side. I couldn't do an immediate implant. There just wasn't enough bone there. So I did not do an immediate placement. I grafted the side, I let it heal. The nice thing about doing it that way is you get you get great attached gingiva over the entire ridge so that when you go back and you do the implant, you have the option of doing it a number of different ways, either flapping it and opening up the tissue or punching through the tissue with a tissue punch or literally just drilling straight to the tissue without even uh, punching the tissue. And that's what I elected to do on that particular day a couple of years ago was just... Uh, Put the, well, you'll see it. You'll see in the uh, you'll see in the video that we're about to show you what we did. Okay. So why don't, you, we why don't you bring that thing up? So we're talking about guided surgery and isolate, and it's been said that's my surgical guide. I have CCAT make those for me. It's been said that you can't use an isolate with guided surgery. Well, you know what? Sometimes you can, and sometimes you can't. If you just don't have any room at all, then uh, you cannot use isolate with guided surgery, but most of the time, and I do a lot of implants, and most of the time when I do my implants, I do them guided, almost 95% of the time they're guided, and all that 95% of the time, I usually, usually use an isolate with it too. So, what we're doing today, that was a CCAT surgical guide that I used, and uh, just pause that for a second, Rolando. Sure. Thanks. Okay, so the thing that the thing that's nice about utilizing a surgical guide with, with the ice light is, as I said, first of all, it takes all the muss and the fuss out of this whole procedure. You put the guide in, you put the ice light in, and what's nice about this thing is the ice light will actually hold the surgical guide in place on the left hand side. I always use a complete full art surgical guide, always, 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 without exception because I have stability and I don't have to worry about supporting the ice light in. Sometimes if I see there's any movement at all, just, just a couple of degrees of movement on the, uh, on the side that you're on the osteotomy side, will throw your, uh, will throw off the direction of the implant. So you just want to make sure this thing is secure. And with the ice light place, I know I've got great security here. So that's just one of the things I'm, I'm relaxed and I'm, it's just not even a worry. And I know that any of these little tiny parts, if I put them in there, and they happen to fall or come out, they're not going to go down the throat. And my assistant, another thing is she just has a, two free hands to do whatever, to hand me all the stuff that I need. So it just makes this whole procedure. I don't think we have a time bar on this thing, but I don't think this took me 10 minutes to do. So let's go ahead. So, you know, we put our sleeve in. First thing we do is pilot hole. You know, we may, we've already measured everything. We've got everything set up. Turn the vacuum on. We go in there the pilot hole you can see all the water being evacuated and the thing of it is i don't have to have a second set of eyes saying oh am i lined up in the x and the y direction it's just perfect um, 
sometimes the hardest part is getting the little sleeves out of there. So the sleeve comes out and I didn't drop it, but if I happen to drop it, you know, I don't have to worry about that. Everything is nice and safe. And with this one, as I said, I just punched through the tissue. So I have my pilot drill. I just change the sleeve and I go in there with a 3.5 burr and yeah, we're probably going to speed here. That took me all of 30 seconds to do, maybe. Go up to the 4.3 by, I think I put an 11.5 millimeter implant in here. I don't remember right now. And that's about what it looks like. Roll that thing right up there. Irrigation. Change the sleeve. And this time I didn't need a sleeve since it was my last osteotomy drill. I go right to depth. The thing that's nice about this is I don't have to worry about going too far. You know, there's just when it's guided with or without ice light, you don't have to worry about going too far. And we irrigate the socket. And this is real time. You can see the you can see the water and the blood being evacuated right up with the ice light. There's just not a whole lot of bleeding here, which is really nice. And we take our implant. There's lots of implant systems out there. This was implant direct. So a couple years ago, I was using the uh, replant type system, which is the uh, select replace clone. And the implant goes in very nicely. And we sit there, we bottom out right now. So now that it's bottomed out, I'll take my torque wrench. I didn't have any more access. And I torque it into place. And you know what? Sometimes you take the ice light out because now I had to remove, pause it right there for a second. Thanks. So I removed the isolite uh, because I was not able to go ahead with the surgical guide in place to torque this down. I could have put the isolite back in, but I feel really safe and confident that nothing's going to go down the throat anywhere while I've got everything is really in good control right now. Could I put it in for added safety? Yeah, but I chose not to here. It was just I was efficient not to putting it in right now. So go ahead. We're torquing this to place. And then I just removed the implant carrier. Would it have been, stop again? Would it have been smarter to put the ice light in? Yeah, it would have been. Would it have been safer? Yeah. Was I worried? Uh, maybe a little bit. But, you know, I sat down there. I had my fingers right around that. So when that got loose, that could have fallen off and gone right down the hatch. So it would have been smarter to keep the ice light back in. Would have taken me all the five seconds to put it in for that added security. But I didn't do it. Okay. So now it comes out. And now we take our implant aligner and once again, you know, as I said, you don't always have to use the ice light, but it just makes life easier. And so now we're just torquing that down to place till we get the proper amount of torque and the right timing on the alignment. And it's there and you can see um, when we take that out, it's really just a bloodless procedure, you know, and there's the, there's our implant in place. It's just perfectly placed and stop it right here. So now we put the ice light back in, but this was on a separate appointment. I just wanted you to see putting in the healing abutment. And this, I believe this was on a separate appointment when I was getting ready to uh, place the place the actual restoration itself. So all this, I put this in just so you can see the healing abutment going to place. And I, I don't remember if this was on the day of surgery or it was a later date. Oh, th no, this is the healing cap, isn't it? The healing abutment, yeah, healing cap, oh, yeah. yeah. So here, that's really a stupid thing to do. Hold it over the, that's really a stupid thing to do, by the way. And yeah, I do stupid things. Hold it right over the patient's mouth to, while you're getting ready to line this thing up. I Stop it for a second. There's a little trick that you can do here. You can put a little bit of red wax right into the end of that healing abutment. That will keep it in place. But if you're going to put that onto your driver, and I have, you know, uh, electric drivers right there. If you're going to put that onto the driver, don't do it over the mouth like I just did. <laughs> That's stupid, <laughs> but I was safe. It was okay, but it was still stupid. And so the reason that looks like it was on a separate appointment, because it looks like everything is healed up really nice. So I don't think that was the day of surgery. I think this was, you know, several months later.
but you get the point. The point being, make life easy for yourself. Make life safe. Um, take the stress out of it. Uh, do a very profitable procedure for those of you that do not do implants. You might want to take some courses and learn how to do implants. It is such a great service for your patients. Um, I am fortunate that I went out and I purchased all of the technology that I needed to be very efficient in doing implants in the office. I plan, I plan everything from reverse um, where I will actually scan the patient on my CEREC machine. I import that digital scan into my CT scanner. I have a Galileo CT scanner. Um, and actually, I just bought the new Axio CT scanner. So anybody that needs a Galileo scanner, hey, I'm selling a Galileo scanner, by the way, a Galileo CT. And I didn't think about it for now, but I, hey, you know, Tom's tips, tip of the day. You can get a $175,000 Galileo CT okay. scanner for $25,000. <laughs> Patterson will even right. bring it out and install it. How about right. that? You didn't check that one, did you? And I didn't either. <laughs> but Thank no, you. Thank best, you. Thank you. In, invest in technology in your office, by the way. Um, if you invest in the technology, it lets your treatment plans go really nice. It's not, nothing is more impressive than a patient that comes in and you say, okay, this is what we're going to do start to finish. And on a half an hour consultation, you can scan the patient's mouth. You can import it into your into your uh, CT scanner and you can design it right in front of the patient. They are ready to go. I mean, they're ready to say yes. They say, sign me up. So cool. that's just get, get the technology in your office, everybody. Um, and that's kind of the, that's kind of the thing of the day. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate that. Hey folks, if you like that, please share it. Let us know what you like next week. What are you thinking of, uh, what's kind of the case that you're thinking or okay. what you next, next week. Um, simple thing next week, next week, what we're going to do is a class two composite on number 30. Uh, I just looked at my schedule today to see what I wanted to film and yeah. You know, we've been on implants, we've been on crown and bridge. Let's let's go to a filling. Let's go to the everyday bread and butter dentistry. Certainly, implants was not bread and butter everyday dentistry. That's kind of the exception. That's the icing on the cake. But also next week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a new. I am going to introduce a new product for you. I have designed a hypochlorous sprayer, and this is what this is: bottle of hypochlorous on a little spraying situation that connects with the quick connect right into the air supply in your office. This is a plug and play five minute installation if you want to put the hanger in there. But if you don't want to put a hanger in there, you can just plug this into the operatory that you want to go in and go from room to room to room or have one in every room. But awesome. this is super, super, super effective and the patients love getting sprayed down. Every patient gets sprayed down. So that's what I'm going to talk about next week along with Thanks. the, uh, the along with the filling. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Hirsch. Thank you, folks, for joining us. If you like this, please share it. If you have questions, let us know. If there are things that you'd like to see Dr. Hirsch do, send us that. Again, thank you. Have a wonderful week. It's uh, appreciate you doing this. Looking forward to yeah. it. And uh, Yeah, this is awesome. And if you want that CT scanner, let me know, because seriously, I am selling it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.